Rome is a city that has had a profound impact on world history. From its early beginnings as a small village on the banks of the Tiber River, to its rise as a powerful empire that dominated much of the Mediterranean world, Rome has played a significant role in shaping Western civilization. In this article, we will explore the early history of Rome, from its legendary foundation by Romulus and Remus to the establishment of the Roman Republic. Romulus and Remus Romulus and Remus are two legendary figures in the early history of Rome. According to legend, they were twin brothers who were born to the god Mars and the Vestal Virgin Rhea Silvia. Their mother was forced to become a Vestal Virgin, which meant she had to remain celibate for the rest of her life. However, Mars visited her in her sleep and impregnated her with the twin brothers. When the twins were born, their uncle Amulius feared that they would one day overthrow him, so he ordered them to be abandoned in the wilderness. The twins were left to die on the banks of the Tiber River, but they were saved by a she-wolf, who nursed them and raised them as her own. As the twins grew older, they became skilled hunters and warriors. They eventually discovered their true identity and decided to take revenge on their uncle Amulius. They overthrew him and reinstated their grandfather Numitor as the rightful king of Alba Longa. Romulus and Remus then decided to found their own city on the banks of the Tiber River, where they had been abandoned as infants. However, the two brothers disagreed over where to build the city. According to legend, Romulus wanted to build the city on the Palatine Hill, while Remus wanted to build it on the Aventine Hill. To settle the dispute, the brothers decided to consult with the gods. They each stood on their respective hills and watched for a sign from the gods. Remus saw six vultures, while Romulus saw twelve. Romulus claimed that he had won the sign from the gods, and he proceeded to begin building the city on the Palatine Hill. However, when Remus saw the walls that Romulus had built, he mocked them and jumped over them to show how easy they were to breach. In a fit of rage, Romulus killed his brother and declared himself the sole ruler of the new city, which he named Rome in honor of himself. The story of Romulus and Remus has been a central part of Roman mythology for centuries, and it has been depicted in art, literature, and film. While the story may be based on some historical truth, it is difficult to separate fact from fiction. Nevertheless, the story of Romulus and Remus has played an important role in shaping the identity and mythology of Rome. According to legend, Rome was founded in 753 BCE by Romulus and Remus, twin brothers who were raised by a she-wolf after being abandoned as infants. The brothers grew up to become leaders of the small village that would eventually become Rome. However, the early history of Rome is shrouded in myth and legend, and it is difficult to separate fact from fiction. Some historians believe that Rome was actually founded by Etruscan settlers who migrated to the area in the 8th century BCE. Regardless of its origins, Rome began to grow in power and influence over the centuries. In the 6th century BCE, the city was ruled by kings, who held absolute power over the people. The Roman kings were said to have been selected by the gods, and they were responsible for maintaining law and order, defending the city from external threats, and presiding over religious ceremonies. However, the power of the kings was not unlimited. They were advised by a council of elders, known as the Senate, and they were required to consult with the people before making major decisions. In 509 BCE, the Roman people overthrew the last king of Rome and established a republic. The Roman Republic was a form of government in which power was divided among different branches, each with its own set of responsibilities. At the head of the Republic were two consuls, who were elected by the people for a one-year term. The consuls were responsible for leading the army, presiding over the Senate, and acting as judges in legal cases. The Senate was made up of around 300 members, who were appointed for life. 
The Senate was responsible for advising the councils and making decisions on matters of state. The Senate also had the power to declare war, make treaties, and oversee the finances of the Republic. In addition to the councils and the Senate, the Roman Republic also had a popular assembly, which was made up of all male citizens over the age of 18. The assembly was responsible for electing the councils and passing laws. However, the assembly did not have as much power as the Senate, and its decisions could be overruled by the Senate or the consuls. Under the Roman Republic, Rome continued to expand its influence throughout Italy. The Romans were skilled warriors, and they were able to conquer neighboring cities and territories through a combination of military might and political alliances. One of the most significant conquests was the city of Carthage, which was located on the coast of modern-day Tunisia. The Romans and Carthaginians fought a series of wars, known as the Punic Wars, which lasted from 264 BCE to 146 BCE. In the end, the Romans emerged victorious, and Carthage was destroyed. As Rome continued to expand, it became increasingly difficult to maintain the balance of power between the consuls, the Senate, and the Assembly. In the 2nd century BCE, a series of reforms were introduced that gave more power to the people. These reforms included the creation of a new assembly, known as the Tribal Assembly, which was based on geographical regions rather than social class. The Tribal Assembly had more power than the original assembly, and it was able to pass laws that were binding on all citizens. Despite these reforms, the Roman Republic continued to struggle with political instability and social unrest.